We are now living through a truly strange yet critical moment in our history. We've come again to a time wherein the fates of countless lives lay in the hands of a few. The current conflict in Ukraine could be described as a proxy war between NATO and Russia, and the use of tactical nuclear weapons cannot be ruled out as a threat, however unlikely that may be. Anxiety and paranoia reign in a time of great tension and uncertainty, and even though Canada remains a NATO ally and will always strive to resolve conflict diplomatically, it is not necessarily the case that Canada would be completely safe from a nuclear attack. I don't mean to fear monger. Realistically, it would be almost suicidal for any nation to intentionally use nuclear weapons against another, and I don't think Russia is really that foolish. Though I've been wrong before. Use of such weapons would most likely lead to an escalating situation wherein each side responds with exponential ferocity, ultimately leading to the destruction of Europe, much of Asia, and most of North America. I'm not a strategist, nor am I qualified to be talking about any of this to you. Anyways, I'd like to discuss potential targets in Canada were such a situation to unfold. Counterforce and countervalue are core ideas in planning for a nuclear assault. Each type of strike has different types of targets. A counterforce strike would target military installations such as bases, airfields, command and control centers, and missile silos, while a countervalue strike would target civilian installations. These can range from industrial facilities, power generation facilities, logistics and communications infrastructure, to entire cities. We would expect any potential nuclear attack, whether it be from Russia, North Korea, or another hostile state, would include a blend of both counterforce and countervalue targets. For this reason, it can be difficult to determine which areas would most likely be targeted, especially in Canada as most of Russia's targets are likely to be in the continental United States, and a sizable portion of Canada is either sparsely populated or completely uninhabited, with its strategic resources widely dispersed. Canada is a large country with most of its population concentrated in southern Ontario and parts of Quebec, along the border with the United States. It operates 27 military bases and installations across the country, with Ontario alone hosting nine such installations, of which are four Air Force wings, two Army bases, a couple of service centers, and the National Defense HQ, or NDHQ. We don't have missile silos or nuclear weapons, but it is believed we do allow the Americans to transport theirs through our territory by air or sea with government approval. Canada also has over 106 power generating stations with a capacity of 250 megawatts or more, the largest being Bruce Nuclear in Ontario with a capacity of over 6,000 megawatts. Canada has five nuclear power plants which produce about 15% of Canada's total energy needs. A large amount of this energy gets put to use in resource extraction and refinement, with some of the world's largest mines which extract materials like gold, aluminium, iron, copper, nickel, zinc, and uranium. There is even a uranium refinement facility in Blind River, Ontario, which is the largest in the world. In the event of a nuclear attack, it's to be expected that most, if not all, of these areas might be targeted. With all that considered, the question now becomes, what kind of attack would we be faced with? A predominantly counter-force or counter-value strike? The actual impact and outcome of a nuclear attack would depend on various factors such as the enemy's strategy, potential countermeasures, the size and type of the weapons used, the number of detonations, the geographic location of the targets, the weather conditions, and more. The more factors you consider, the more difficult it becomes to answer this question. So because of that, I've decided to create three scenarios we can take a look at to try and determine the outcome of various types of attack. The least destructive type of attack, at least from the perspective of the population, might be a counter-force attack. In this scenario, 
most military bases across the country are destroyed in a surprise first strike, with the highest value targets likely being NDHQ, CFB Esquimalt, CFB Halifax, CFB Cold Lake, and CFB Kingston. These strikes would attempt to cripple Canada's military capabilities and mainly consist of ground bursts, which would completely destroy their designated targets, but these ground bursts would also produce vast amounts of fallout, which would travel with the wind over large areas, irradiating an untold amount of people. The communities that hosted these installations would most likely be partially or totally destroyed, with a sizable crater where they used to be. Most smaller cities and towns would likely be spared the worst of the horror, and depending on their distance to the impacted areas, they may even be able to continue with relatively normal lives. The next scenario imagines a mixed attack, with both counter-force and counter-value targets. The three nuclear generating stations in Ontario would likely be destroyed, along with the Blind River Uranium Refinery, the St. John Oil Refinery, and several other significant refineries around the country. I imagine there would also be strikes on many extraction sites, most notably those in British Columbia and Saskatchewan, the latter containing Canada's only uranium mine. These strikes mainly consist of airbursts to maximize the dispersion of the shockwave and create as much destruction as possible, though the creation of fallout is significantly reduced. In a mixed attack, the destruction would be fairly evenly distributed across civilian and military installations. The amount of fallout depends on the exact ratio of ground air bursts, the size of warheads used, and the direction and strength of the wind during and following the attack, so it's hard to say how many casualties there would actually be. A counter-value attack would likely be the most destructive type of attack we could face. In this type of strike, the goal is to destroy as much of Canada's industry and economy as possible and may result in the highest casualties of these scenarios. The largest cities in Canada, Toronto, Montreal, Calgary, Ottawa, Edmonton, Winnipeg, Mississauga, and Vancouver would all likely be hit with several airbursts to ensure the total destruction of these cities. The lives of millions of Canadians could be extinguished in an instant and countless more forever changed by these blasts. Simply, a major portion of Canada wouldn't exist anymore. The one upside, if you could say there were one, would be that because most of the explosions might be airbursts, the amount of fallout wouldn't be as high as in a mixed or counterforce attack. One could argue that life, though drastically different, could continue in sparsely populated areas. Though we are still likely to receive some incoming fallout from the United States, particularly around Sarnia, Niagara Falls, and the Southern Prairies. Generally, in all three scenarios, we can expect some, if not most, of Canada's major cities to be hit. Toronto and Ottawa are certain, as well as Sarnia and Niagara Falls due to their proximity to the states. Parts of British Columbia, Alberta, Saskatchewan, as well as most of southern Ontario and Quebec may become uninhabitable due to the contaminated soil and water sources. At the moment of the explosions, people and buildings close to the blast are instantly vaporized. Those who are out in the open are exposed to a heat that is many times that of the surface of our sun, as well as a dose of radiation that is almost certainly fatal. Those inside tall buildings are crushed by falling debris, and those inside their cars and homes several kilometers away would still be subject to a shockwave that sends glass, splinters, and large objects flying towards them like bullets out of a gun. The casualties, that is, both seriously injured and killed, would be in the millions. There is an ongoing discussion about whether a nuclear war would result in the end of all civilization or just our own. While history has shown that catastrophic events have led to the collapse of certain civilizations, such as the Romans, Persians, and Sumerians, humanity has always managed to rebuild and create new life for itself. However, a nuclear war would present an unprecedented challenge, as it is unknown if it would even be possible to rebuild in the radioactive aftermath. 
The destruction would be immense, with homes, offices, schools, hospitals, and other monuments of a bygone era reduced to rubble. The reality is that in the best case scenario, we'd be facing the worst humanitarian crisis in modern history. In the worst case, life as we know it could be forever lost, replaced with a post-apocalyptic world that would require immense effort to rebuild, if that were possible at all. <laughs>